This is the Jumper T16 and it's pretty freaking cool, but Jumper has done goofed in one area and today I'm going to show you how to fix it. The multi-protocol module, the internal multi-protocol module that they shipped, you know, you used to have the 4-in-1, this is a Crossfire module, not the 4-in-1, but you used to have this 4-in-1 module and if you needed to update the firmware on your 4-in-1 module, it had a USB plug in it, you just plug it into your computer and you update the firmware. Then they started shipping with the internal multi-protocol module and that was cool because it left the JR module bay free for a Crossfire or your R9 or whatever it is you want to do, but there's a problem with the internal multi-protocol module. It hasn't got a bootloader. I know, right? Are you freaking out right now? No, because you a lot of you don't even know what a bootloader is and you don't care and maybe you will never care. Here's the thing. Do you ever want to update the firmware on your multi-protocol? Not, not your radio. I'm not talking about like putting OpenTX on the radio, which I'm going to show you how to do as soon as OpenTX finally releases the firmware. I'm talking about updating the firmware of the module itself. Like, I heard that they recently added Gropner protocol support. Oh, do you have a bunch of Gropner receivers that you want to run on? Well, then you want to update this firmware on the module. If you ever do want to update the firmware on the module again, you need to have a bootloader because what the bootloader lets you do is go into the menu on the T16, flash the firmware to the module from the SD card just by going through the menus and saying flash module. What you got to do when you don't have a bootloader is you got to get, uh, I'm trying to, I don't have one nearby, a CP210 adapter and you got to solder it up and it's a huge pain in the butt. And that's what I'm going to show you how to do in this video today. We are going to flash the module one time with a CP210 adapter. We're going to install the bootloader and then we never have to do it again. Or maybe you'll just say, screw it, I'll never update the firmware on my module anyway, and you'll just skip this whole video. <laughs> I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. The way to tell whether you have a bootloader, they fixed it. They Now they're shipping them with a bootloader. So if you bought your radio recently, you might be fine. Here's how to tell. What you're going to do is you're going to long press model and you're going to need to be on a model that is using the multi-protocol module. So down here where internal RF, we need it set to multi. And if you don't have such a thing already made, well, go ahead and make one. But it's set to multi and you can see module status says 12151. Now, if your module says 12185 or newer, you're fine. You can literally skip this whole video. But if yours, like mine, says 12151, you need to go through these steps. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to power this guy down. And we're going to take the battery out. And we're going to open it up. To take the radio apart, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove these plastic grips on the back and on the sides. They just pop out. And then we're going to remove one, two, three, four, five, six screws. And we're going to loosen these screws. You can actually just take them out entirely and this thing will lift off. When you've done that, the back of the radio will pull away. Okay, back of the radio comes off. We can set that aside. This is the next thing we need. It is a CP210 adapter and it's what's going to let our computer talk to the module and flash the firmware to the module. And before we get any further, by the way, I have to say, I did not like cleverly come up with this stuff on myself. I'm following an RC Groups thread that was started by a guy named Ben Lai. And thank you to Ben for detailing the steps. Uh, I'm just making it. Ben didn't make a video about it. Or if he did, he doesn't have as popular a YouTube channel as me. So I'm making the tutorial because I know a lot of you guys wouldn't follow the RC Groups thread. But the RC Groups thread is linked down below if you would prefer to go get your information straight from the source or if you just don't like listening to me talk for hours. Here's the CP210 adapter. Links to it is all, links to all this stuff is in the video description, the stuff you're going to need to make this happen. Uh, and it is connected to this plug. And by sheer coincidence, this is the exact same plug 
that comes with an RXSR receiver. So you can buy a spare RXSR plug, but I just happen to have some spare RXSRs, so I just pulled the wiring out, and I'm just going to reuse this. Um, I'll probably never use this CP210 adapter again. I, I use them once every, like, four years when I need to. So I'll just reuse this wire harness with my RXSR as I would have. The way to wire it up, assuming that you're using a standard RXSR plug with the standard colors, uh, white, green, yellow, red, black, is... Hey there, it's Joshua from the future here to tell you that the colors in an RXSR plug are the same as the colors used in the demo on the Rorsi Groups page, but they are in a completely different order and do not use the diagram on the RC Groups page. It is completely not what you need if you are using a standard RXSR plug. Let's see we can actually get this right. Take white and green from the RXSR plug, solder them together, and connect them to 3v3 on the CP210 adapter. And then the remaining wires are going to go like this. Let's see if this works correct. <laughs> The next thing to do is to download the multi-protocol firmware from this link, which is in the video description, of course. And it looks like the version is 13047, which is way newer than the version being discussed for the jumpers. But um, let's go ahead and... Oh, so uh, I have no idea why, but the multi-protocol module cares about your channel order. I have no idea why that is, because, I don't know, the radio sends, who cares what channel is what? But okay, maybe it matters with, oh, with like PWM receivers and servos. I just don't see how that could possibly matter with Betaflight. But we're going to do it right. Uh, my channel order is AETR. You can get that by looking in the uh, mixer screen and seeing what order the channels are in. We want to scroll down this list till we get to the section that starts with multi STM open TX, and then we want to find our channel order, which for me is AETR. So I've got multi STM open TX AETR. And then we need the no inv version. So for me, it's going to be multi STM open TX AETR no inv. You're going to be the same, except you're going to put your preferred channel order for, I think this is the default channel order for Betaflight. Anyway, AETR. That's the one I'm going to download. I'm going to click on that, and it's going to download. Now, at this point, the instructions tell you to plug in the USB uh, USB CP210 adapter and then plug in your battery and turn the radio on. And I think I've made life simpler because I have had you solder the 3.3 volt output for the module to the 3.3 volt on the CP210. So I think you should be able to flash the whole thing simply by plugging in without dealing with this and turning the radio on and off. Let's see if I'm correct about that. So here in the flashing utility, I'm going to browse to the downloads folder or wherever I saved this bin file, and I'm going to select that. Then you see I've got no serial ports or COM1. I'm going to go ahead and plug in the CP210 adapter and I should get an additional COM port. I'm going to select that COM port, and then I'm going to hit Upload. And it's working. Yes! Yes! Now, just wait. Here, and the final thing to do is going to be to plug in the battery. And we'll just double check the firmware version. And there we go, version 13047. You want to see that that has updated from whatever it was at the beginning of this process. Now, we'll go. Yeah, let's go back to the bench. And then all you got to do is put the radio back together, pretty much the opposite of the way you took it apart. One thing to keep in mind is that there's this little circuit board down at the bottom. It is uh, where the battery plugs in and it's got the SD card holder. And as you put the back back on, make sure that that is like lined up correctly with the holes 
in the back of the radio. In fact, you might want to take the SD card out because you can push on the SD card with the back of the radio and pop the SD card out and just, just line that up correctly when everything goes back together. Now you've done it. Now you have a radio with a bootloader on it and you can update the firmware with all the new cool things that the multi-protocol project is doing. Or you can never think about this again, which is probably the case, but I've, at least I've given you the option. If you're watching this video, then you surely own a Jumper T16 radio, and you surely ought to know that I have a whole playlist of videos about the Jumper T16. It's linked in the video description, all the things from the very initial basic setup to binding and creating a model with Betaflight. Frankly, if you've just done this, you probably already know how to do all that because this is pretty advanced, but check out that video and see if there's some cool stuff in there showing you how to do something with the T16. All modes on one channel. You wanna have all your aux modes on a single channel? Yeah, that's, I think that's in that playlist. Maybe it's in my beta flight playlist. You know, this isn't even the video I wanted to make you today. I wanted to make you the video about how to upgrade to OpenTX from Jumper TX. So you're not, you know, so that you can use OpenTX Companion and all those, but that, OpenTX isn't out yet. It's almost out. And as soon as they release it, I will make that video. And if you want to make sure you don't miss that video, make sure you're subscribed and hit that notification bell so you see all the videos. I put out videos almost every day. You don't want to miss anything related to the T16. Thank you so much for watching this one. Hope you've enjoyed it. Happy flying.